Today we're going to be working on the wire skull. And as you can see here, I have a skull that I posted pretty much in eyes view of my crown here. I do have a video on how to make your crown on my channel. So if you haven't seen that process yet, go ahead and click on that video and watch how I make a crown. Um, if you have a skull, this is obviously a plastic skull. You can purchase those at a lot of different types of art supply stores. Um, and uh, But what we're going to do here is try to do a simple linear drawing or a linear sculpture, which is like a linear drawing, in order to create a armature, which is a skeletal structure, to create a wire skull that is going to be a bit smaller than an actual skull in order to proceed onto a portrait bust. Now, some of the tools that you're going to need to use are your wires that I have provided a description for you. What we're going to be using is a 22 gauge galvanized steel wire. That is the best wire that I like to use, but they sell all different types of gauges, which is thicknesses of wire. Um, at the art supply store, they even have softer aluminum wire. Uh, I like to use this type of uh, galvanized wire, um, which is actually um, uh, electrical fence wire, um, but they sell all types at different types of uh, uh, you know, hardware stores. But the um, uh, reason why I want to use galvanized steel is because we're going to be putting a lot of clay and plaster on your armature in order to create your portrait. Um, but um, uh, And that uh, steel wire, any type of other wire, would possibly uh, corrode and uh, rust and, and whatever. Uh, what's nice about using galvanized wires is that you can reuse your armature over and over and over again, depending on what you're doing, um, and uh, uh, it will prevent it from rusting. Um, but uh, galvanized steel is the best wire to use, but just grab what you can. Uh, you're also going to need your diagonal wire cutters. Make sure you have a good pair of those and your long nose uh, wire pliers here. Um, your, uh, uh, you will have a, a, a wire cutter on your long nose pliers, but we need to get really close in some of these uh, processes and some of these uh, crimps and attachments uh, to attach wire together. So you're gonna need your regular wire too. And make sure they're long enough so you have a good strength. Some of the smaller ones uh, don't really provide you a lot of strength. Uh, you're also going to want to make yourself a caliper and um, a caliper tool is uh, easily made uh, like this. It's the same copper wire, the six gauge copper wire that you use for your crown. Again, all that information is on that previous video of the, uh, the strong armature video. That is the title of the video. Uh, but you can see here I, I was how I simply just curled and did some hand forming to create this shape here that then we could um, expand and contract in order to get some proper measurements on the skull. And you'll see that uh, on the skull that I put uh, some uh, uh, dots or some markers, and I'll move to the skull here, um, and you'll see how we can use this armature um, calipering here in order to gauge some widths and some anchor points that we're going to try to mimic and, and uh, use as a measurement to create your skull. They also sell uh, calipers at the art supply store um, that you could uh, buy or you know maybe you have an old pair in, in somewhere around your garage or somewhere but if you don't have them go ahead and make yourself one uh, you can use any type of wire even an old hanger if you kind of spend some time you can go ahead and make a, a set of calipers for that and you can see how in the center here I uh, did just a real simple kind of looping of some of my galvanized 22 gauge wire and that kind of nicely kind of allows it to grab at certain areas when I'm expanding and contracting. And since it's copper, you can bend it and it can stay in a perfect position. So a really good tool that you're going to need to use. Uh, so Now you can see how I've cut my 22 gauge wire uh, to about 10 to 12 inches. And I really want you to try to utilize the curve that the wire already kind of, uh, you know, uh, forms in when you're cutting it off of the spool because we're going to use that curve 
uh, for your basic shapes of the skull. Um, so go ahead and cut about 10 strips, about 10 to 12 inches length each, and then um, we'll go ahead and continue on. Um, so go ahead and do that and then we'll get ready. Okay, now, after that, first thing I want you to do is kind of analyze the skull. So let me go ahead and do a little zoom in here and we're gonna kind of take a look at some of the anchor points that I put for you here. And you can see how all I've done is just added some uh, red stickers into uh, some of the points that we're going to use as these segments to attach the wire together. Now remember, in the demonstration that I have on my channel, the strong armature demonstration, you learn how to make a crown, but there's also an armature demonstration on how to work with this wire and the specific ways that we are going to be crimping the wire to each other. I'll go over the process uh, briefly with this demonstration, but if you really want a good uh, demonstration on how to actually attach the wire and use a crimping system, go to my wire armature demonstration that is on the channel and you'll get a more in-depth process uh, de uh, de uh, description on how to use uh, the tips and how to bend. But I'll go over that in a bit. So you see here on the skull where I have some anchor points, forehead, uh, bridge of the nose, cheekbones, top of the roof of the bone, uh, mouth bone, chin. I also have some anchor points uh, on the bottom jaw, side of the head, and in the back here you can see how I also have anchor points on different parts of the back of the skull. So those are just our basic points that we're going to use to measure and to create our curve forms because you can see how the wire is curved uh, just like, uh, you know, gracefully, just like how the bottom of the skull is and the slope of the top of the skull here as well. Now, I do know that all skulls are different. Uh, this is just a generic skull. Uh, I like to use this skull because it looks old. It's kind of beat up from uh, years of studio use. You know, we've dropped this skull, we've taped it together, we've epoxied it, but it kind of gives it a little bit more feel. Um, remember, you can uh, try to use any type of skull that you can find uh, or uh, do your best to try to utilize some maybe uh, graphics that are online that you can use as a reference. But an actual real skull is going to be the best thing that you can do or a real form skull. And uh, I want to kind of make sure that we're not going to be doing a stylized skull, that we're going to be using an atomically correct skull. And that's kind of important when you go into uh, the portrait bust. There's so many different types of stylized skulls out there. Um, but try your best to grab or at least try to do this first assignment here with an actual atomically correct skull. So the best way to describe what we are going to be doing is creating a very simplified linear skull. And linear would be considered a line simplification of a form. So just imagine a simplified shape of each one of these anchor points. Uh, we're going to be forming that out with your wire. So a simplified linear shape of this skull. Now one of the first things we're going to want to consider is to always make your wire armature about 10 to 15 percent times smaller than your actual skull. You never want to make your wire armature the exact same size or more importantly even larger than your uh, perceived design or your perceived idea because remember you want to make room for clay and plaster or whatever you want or need to model your form. So let's say we're doing a actual portrait bust of, uh, of an actual person. You want to make that portrait bust as accurate as possible when it comes to proportion and scale. So we want to make room for the clay and the modeling and any type of handwork we want. So make sure that we are aiming at a smaller scale of a wire skull in order to then again to create a proper size head that's not too large. If you make your armature size the same exact, uh, same exact size as the wire skull then your clay would be uh, your clay head would be a lot larger than the actual skull. So always think about a good inch to two inches of thickness of clay modeling from the armature or skeletal structure that you're going to be adding onto that of uh, uh, on, onto that armature with clay. 
So the first thing I'm going to do here is consider where my first uh, face of my skull is going to be. So I want you to observe your armature and just choose one of these points, right? So for instance, I've chosen that this shape right here is going to be where my face is going to hang from my post. You can always consider that your post is going to be equivalent to your spinal column of your head. So if I look at the armature or the skull here to the side, you can see that there's a good amount of space from that spinal column, which is the post or which is your metal post here. And look at the amount of space that I have from the chin to that spinal column. We want to make sure that we observe certain things like that first before we kind of consider uh, uh, going into the wire form. Always observe kind of some basic shapes. So for instance, another thing to consider is the fact that the skull is not an orb. The skull is actually kind of a kind of an avocado shape. Again, I do know that all skulls are differently shaped, but we're using a generic shaped skull. So that is something I want you to consider. If you kind of um, uh, edit out the head here, I mean, I'm sorry, the face, you can see that the shape of the profile of the skull is not a sphere or a perfect circle. It is almost an egg form, okay? Same thing with the bottom, okay? And same thing with the top. So be sure that you are always observing your, um, your subject matter before you kind of go into it. Be sure to take a good look at what you are are trying to mimic or trying to form, especially when it comes to something as complicated as a skull. And why we are doing this is because uh, before you go into the clay and the modeling, if you construct the skeletal structure as accurately as possible, it'll definitely positively influence your sculpture as you go along with the modeling process. You're already making decisions while you are uh, making the armature. You're already deciding certain uh, uh, parameters that you're going to maintain. You're already going to be observing the three-dimensionality of the skull because most of us really just observe the head in the mirror. And remember that the mirror is already two-dimensionalizing a lot of things. So when you are looking at an actual form, whether it be a skull, whether it be a still life of some sort of found object, remember that you are needing to observe it as if you've never seen it before. Really scan it and observe it and force yourself to really look because now we are trying to mimic in the three dimension, which makes things a little bit more complicated than how you would if you were trying to rep represent this in a two-dimensional image, such as a painting or a drawing. So the first thing that I want you to do is after you've chosen which, which side of your crown here is going to be the face, uh, let's go ahead and start off with the simplest shape, which is going to be the forehead. So you can see here how I have a point from the top of that uh, side of the head here, and I have another point to this side. I want you to go ahead and just grab a hold of your wire and just lay it right across that forehead. And you can see how I'm using a lot of symmetry here. I'm making sure that I'm grabbing it with both hands and I'm making sure that I have equal amounts of, of, of excess of wire on each side as I go in. And you can face that any way that you need to. I'm gonna go ahead and lay it right on. Just make some two bend points, right? Where those two points are. And you can see how I've easily just made a curve and I've made two markers where those two red points are very similar. Now remember, we are going to want to be going a little bit smaller than the actual um, um, sculpture or the actual skull because remember we want that 15 to 20 percent, I'm sorry, 10 to 15 percent minimizing of that shape in order to leave room for the clay uh, forming that we're going to be doing later on. Now after you have that formed out, fairly simple, I've just lined up those points Okay, and made two bends on the side points. Now I'm gonna go ahead and attach. Now remember, in that armature demo, I do go over how to attach wire to wire. There is a specific way that I want you to uh, learn how to do that because we need this wire armature to be strong. Eventually, when we are proceeding with this process, uh, this armature here is gonna hold wire, clay, plaster, silicon, rubber, anything that we need in order to create that mold, but that's later on. So I'm gonna quickly just bend this over, right? Hold those two points. Okay, now you can see how I'm also making a decision where I'm putting this in the placement of the top of my crown. I've chosen just right at the half point of this curve. Again, I'm going to crimp 
and I will do a zoom in on the next crimp so you can kind of get a sense of what I'm doing there. But that is my first attachment. Okay, now I have a decent attachment. I have a lot of slack. Remember when you do your crimps, give yourself a lot of extra wire so it, so it bends properly and it uses that tensile strength. Very important. That's why I want you to cut each strip of wire a good 10 to 12 inches so you have plenty of wire to work with. If you try to be real um, stingy with your wire, wire really uh, becomes difficult to work with. So let me do a zoom in on this next uh, crimp here and then we'll proceed. Zoom in. Okay, now here I go, I've zoomed in. Now I'm going to make sure that I'm at equal full distance between both areas. I want it nice and level. I don't want it crooked, so I'm gonna bend that around, making it a little smaller, okay? Now remember, I'm going to have plenty of slack to bend over. Don't worry about that length, okay? You're gonna need that length. I'll bend down a little bit, you can see how long that is right here, give yourself plenty of wire to work with. Now remember, you do not want these two crossing over when you are crimping, okay? See how that is crossing over? That is not what you want, because you do not want that to be crossing over at all, all right? Because that will not grab as well, so make sure that you are holding these two very, very uh, uh, gently, but you're gonna want, them, want to prevent them from crossing over, and you're gonna make things are level Make sure, and then I'm going to crimp right there. And again, that crimping is going to give you a very, very strong and efficient crimp. Okay, that's gonna hold on to that wire very nicely. Now, if that still is loose, okay, here's where your diagonal wires come in, your diagonal cutters. You see how I'm going with my flat face? Okay, my flat side or face of diagonal now I'm going to go right inside there and just do a, a little grab. I'm not going to cut it, just a small little grab. Now after we have crimped both sides of our forehead, again remember you can see how this top crown here, part of the crown, is already creating a good slope for our top of the skull. Um, now you're going to also notice that it's going to be a little loose. Do not worry about that as long as it's solidly just staying in place. When we have a, the rest of the wire segmented out and crimped, you're going to see that's going to get stronger and stronger. And then we're going to later on in the process add some plaster and fabric. Now you see how we have some of these um, points here that have this excess. All you're going to do now is you're going to trim these two sections off. Make sure you grab a hold of your uh, extra excess wire. Do not cut the main wire, just make sure that you are cutting the excess wire. That's why we are needing our diagonal cuts. Remember to always go back into these areas and maybe do a small amount of securing with your diagonal wire cutters. And you might have to do that as you go along. The whole process is continuously uh, with your diagonal cutters tightening up your segments as it gets uh, 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 more constructed. Now what's cool about this process is that I've done complete full-size uh, figurative sculptures and abstract forms, all types of shapes with this process from this scale here, the head, all the way up to, uh, you know, uh, 10, uh, 15 feet. You can build a whole form with this two type of gauge of wire, your six gauge and your 22 gauge, that with an accumulation of plaster and fabric, combining that tensile strength with this um, uh, compression strength, these two properties. Again, I describe all of this in the armature video. Uh, you can build pretty much any structure. What's cool about it is the wire gives you that flexibility to form it into any shape. So step number two is to now let's do the cheekbones. So we're going to work with uh, the top of the forehead point, cheekbone point, nose brow point, and uh, the other two cheekbone bone points and the other points. So uh, again, we're gonna go ahead and hold on to your material, your wire symmetrically. And I'm going to simply place that right there in the center, make sure I'm, I'm at the center point of my wire. And I'm gonna do a simple bend like this, just like so. 
okay? Um, and you can see how you can naturally use the curvature of your thumbs. What's interesting about uh, working with a um, sculpture like this, especially with the head, is how your hands and your um, finger, the shape of your thumb and the shape of your index really fit perfectly in in, in specific areas, it's almost as if like our hands are made to to form uh, uh, our own bodies. Um, so you're going to start off with that uh, equal point, okay? And then I'm going to go ahead and make sure I'm forming, but in a simple way. I'm not worrying too much about uh, getting a, a really accurate. I just want the basic shape of that brow bone, nose bone, to your cheekbone, all the way up to your uh, point up there. Now you see what I've done there, how easy that was. I got the initial shape. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Okay, same thing. Use the curve of my thumbs to do most of the shaping. Again, try to make it as symmetrical as possible. But again, remember we are, uh, you know, making sculpture. So things aren't going to are, are going to have your own unique shape because of your own uh, hands and your own pressure and your own environment that you're working. And you see just like that how I have a pretty simple, simplified, linear uh, uh, shape of that part of the face, the cheekbone up into the forehead. Very easy. Now, I'm also going to want to make sure that I'm noticing that there is a, a distance between a, the, the tip of the nose bone here and the back of the brow. So I'm going to want to go ahead and do the same thing with my wire here and bend that three-dimensionally to the side. So we're not just working with a flat wire. You can see I bent that so it slopes back just like the skull slopes back here from the point of the nose bone all the way back. You can see how that profile is. Okay. After that, we're going to return to the wire here. And let's attach that in the proper position. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and keep the skull in the frame so we can kind of work with it as we go. Now, uh, you can see how I'm using this line here up at the skull area. Okay, and just kind of making that that line here down here in my wire armature. And I'm going to want to make sure that I do a little bit of measurement here um, from the top of the forehead to that point where I have measured out. I'm going to bend my calipers here to make sure that I'm having somewhat of a guided placement and a measurement. Okay, now again, I'm going to want to make it a little bit smaller than that area. I'm going to kind of remember my spacing here as well. Okay, put that down to the side. Okay, kind of have that. And again, I want to make sure that I am symmetrical, that I have equal amounts of space on each side. I'm going to mark that, okay, with my thumb here, making sure I'm maintaining a good, even symmetry. Then I'm going to pick up my long nose pliers. I'll try to zoom in here so you can make sure you see how I can, I'm going to do that crimp. Okay, I'm going to utilize a lot of slack here. I've got about an inch of slack from my, the tip of my needle nose pliers, right? And I'm going to make a nice U here, a good tight crimp U. Again, remember, you want that U here to be nice and tight, you'd want, and you want to use the tip of your needle nose pliers. That's where you get that nice shape, the shape that we need. Again, I'm going to make sure that I'm always going back, making sure that I'm even. Take that off and do the same thing on the other side. Make sure I use the very tip. Place my index finger so I can get a nice, good, sharp bend. Remember, if you use the back of your needle nose pliers, that's going to make a larger U. You want a nice, good, tight one. Okay, and you might have to alter, you know, the angle of that so it lays nicely on your wire. So I'm going to lay that in right there. Use some of that tension so it um, works and grabs nicely. Okay, after I'm done with that, I'm going to go ahead and attach with my crimping. Okay, again, I'm going to hold those two 
wires together so they don't crisscross. You can see how it already has some tension on there. If I can do a little twisting, a little working, it shouldn't grab so hard. Again, hold those, preventing those from crisscrossing. And then I'm going to crimp, just like so. Now, again, it's going to have a little bit of movement, but again, as we be continue to attach more wire and crimp more segments, it will get stronger and stronger as we go. Now, when you continue, or before you continue, you're gonna make sure that you're gonna be shaping as you go along. It is wire, so you can continuously shape. Now, remember though, don't get too frustrated with it because all this eventually will be covered in clay and plaster. Again, we are just making a skeletal structure. So the clay and everything that we're going to be adding to it will stay on and won't fall off, which is why we are doing a pretty thorough process before we start adding anything uh, like clay to it. So we are sure that it will maintain the strength needed to provide us what we need to put on to continue this sculpture. I'm gonna lastly make sure I trim off any excess wire. That's gonna be a problem later on. Make sure that you grab, trim off any excess wire. Sometimes you don't need to, sometimes you do. And there is a good simplified eyebrow to cheekbone to forehead. Then we'll move on to the next step. Here is a close up side view of the cheekbone to nose bone to the forehead. And I'll do just a little bit of movement here so you can see how that is turning out as intended. More importantly that I'm noticing and making sure that I have my three dimensionality that is not just a flat eye area, that it curves just like it does on us and the skull. For step number three, we are going to move on to the jawline, the chin. So I moved the wire armature here at, his, at the profile, so hopefully you'll have a better uh, view of it. I know it's kind of hard to see uh, a line form with a lot of distraction of other things like the plaster. But next step, we're going to start at the top of the uh, side skull, top of the cranium here, and then we're going to go down to the jaw point here to the chin to this jaw point all the way up to the top of that side of the cranium um, so you're going to have to have a longer 12 inch or maybe even a 14 or 15 inch length wire for this uh, step which is the third line that we're going to put on uh, so again i'm going to move towards the chin here make sure i am at an equal distance of my thumb working symmetrically okay so i'm going to Go ahead and wrap that right around that chin area, just like that. Make sure that's curving nice and round. You can see how that's already kind of turning into somewhat of a chin shape. Okay, after I do that, then I'm going to bend that up. Simply, you can see how this line here, okay, is moving up towards the point that I want. Make sure I do that to the other side as well. Okay, hold that down. here to a point, simply just use the curve of your thumb and your, uh, and just like that. Okay, bring that over, do a little bit of finessing with your fingertips and you see how I'm, I'm, I'm not aggressively working with that wire. Um, wire should, you should work with that curve and with the straightness of that wire. That's why we're not going to be aggressive with the uh, forming of the wire. The more that you bend the wire, the harder it's going to get. That's with all wire and all metal. The more you kind of flex it, the stronger it will get and the harder it will be to work with. And you can see here how now I have a simplified jawline, just like so. Chin to jaw to top of the side of the cranium. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and get my calipers here so I can get a good distance from that top line to the jaw point line. Again, remember, we're going to want to go a little bit smaller. Okay, but that should do it right there. Got my calipers. Go ahead and move 
my wire form to a proper angle. And I'm going to go ahead and use that. Calibering. Okay. Now you can see how that point right there on that skull is very similar distance from the eyebrow bone to that point. It's very similar from my segment point here to my copper crown. So I can kind of use that as a gauge. Okay. So again, I'm going to make sure I have somewhat of a measured distance. There we go. Okay. I'm going to try to gauge that, hold that right there where I need it. Okay. Then I'm going to move on to my needle nose pliers. Okay. Again, make sure that your needle nose pliers, you're using the very tip and similar to the last step, I'm going to go ahead and make a nice tight U. Now it's going to be symmetrical, so I can go ahead and just kind of eyeball where my second crimp would be making sure I am working symmetrical here and do the same exact thing. Nice tight U. Again, you might need to twist those points so it hangs and hinges nicely. Put that on that side. I'm going to go ahead and crimp that side first. So I can have that already anchored in. Again, I can tighten that up later on. I just want to anchor it down and then go ahead and attach the other side. Again, I want to pay attention to my distance from point here to there. Same thing on this side. Pay attention to my symmetry. Again, if things move and Alter, you can always go back and clean things up. Don't worry about it just right now. You can see how it's a little bit leaning to one side. Again, I can always come back to this side and bend and shape. You're going to be doing that quite a bit. Getting things just right, things loosen up, go ahead and begin to tighten things as you go along. After I have things anchored, I'm going to go ahead and do just a little bit of forming, making sure I'm staying symmetrical, keeping my wire straight. But again, be delicate with it. Wire likes you to work with it. We're dealing with a metal here, so it's going to have its strengths and its weaknesses. Okay, so I have a pretty decent jawline right now. Next step. Cut off any excess wire that I need on each side. Always continue to shape it. And remember, the more wire we put on there, the more stable it's going to get. Okay. Now again, remember that's going to be loose until we start adding some more wire. Let's go ahead and look at a little profile view. Of that things I want to make sure you can see how that chin is sticking out pretty far doesn't happen doesn't work that way on the skull over here so I'm going to make sure that I have that jawline aimed back but we'll do that when we add a good anchor point to the post later on moving on to line four we are going to create a support structure from the cheekbone down to the chin. So we're going to be using these three points, cheekbone, top of the mouth here, and down to the chin. Um, and you can see how uh, all I'm going to do is, is really just use a small part of my wire here. I do want some excess so I can do my crimps, but I'm going to find my central point. Okay, I'll move that to the side there so you can maybe get a better view of that. Okay, but I'm going to use the side here and just basically give myself about an inch from each point. Bottom of the cheekbone to here. That should be plenty. Again, I want excess about an inch or so from those two points so I can do my proper crimps. I'm going to go ahead and cut that. Switch to my needle nose pliers and do the same thing.
going to go ahead and anchor my center chin right there. Same thing here at the top. Again, remember you can always shape as you go. Okay. Same thing here. Make sure I have plenty of excess. Finger, good inch, tight U. Make sure I tighten every segment up. Move things around as I need and then go ahead and tighten as I go. Gonna do some trimming first. And you can see uh, as the shape gets more and more complicated, you have to do a lot more maneuvering of your shoulder, your wrist. So make sure you are doing all this standing. Um, that's the best way to sculpt is to be on your feet so you can utilize your whole body and um, really, really get to uh, controlling the material with your own with all your physicality. One thing sculpture really teaches you is, uh, is, is how to use your body as a tool. And even how you stand um, is going to make a difference. You can see how I'm continuously tightening up areas if they ever get loose. Something you're gonna have to do as you continue to work. You can always reshape Repull, repush, recrimp, rebend, whatever you need to do to achieve the shape that you desire. Okay, turn that to the side there. And we can see how now we have a decent jawline. We have some structure. Okay, we have some connection. Uh, things that we don't want to do is ever put any wire where the eye sockets are going to be or where the mouth's going to be, just so you can have some uh, uh, areas that we can sculpt with some depth or if we need to uh, create, um, you know, something dramatic with the mouth. But all this is reversible, by the way. Um, at any moment while you're sculpting, even if you have plaster and wire and material on there, you can dig into that clay, snip, wire, bend it in, get rid of it, tie more wire into it as you're sculpting. And that's what's great about it as well is you can always expose wire in a section of your sculpture, whatever you're modeling, and attach more wire and plaster to alter the, the overall skeletal structure. So there it is, the two small support bars is what I would call them, is your line four. Again, from your cheekbone, top of the mouth to the chin. Now for line five, we're going to go ahead and create an anchor point or a stable bar from the chin to the post, just so we can uh, keep that face stable as we are continuing on with the back. So uh, all we're going to do is do a, a quick point from the, or bar from uh, the chin down here. And you can see how I'm gonna to wanna to anchor it pretty high. I don't wanna have that anchor point down low because I don't want nothing to get in the way of my neck when I want to sculpt that. So I'm gonna go ahead first and make sure it's uh, pretty much even 
from that point of the chin right here all the way to the post. Okay, again, it's just a way uh, so that we can support the face from moving up and down like that. We're getting some structure though. You can see how at this point now the face is secure, but it's still wiggling up and down. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and anchor around this point. I'll do a zoom in on how I'm going to achieve that point there. And you can see how I do have my crimps tightened. Again, I'm continuously going and tighten as I go. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure. It's always best to grab onto some of the plaster because that plaster is a little bit rough and it does, um, it does provide a good uh, grab. Okay, easily, I'm just gonna do one hook. Great way to kind of tie wire, because remember, reason why we're doing these crimping methods here is because wire does not like to be twisted and wrapped and wrapped. It will not hold. A wire likes to be uh, very simply uh, um, gr um, anchored. That's the best way to work with wire. So you see, all I've done is compress that circle as much as I can around that post, created a hook. Okay, I'm gonna crimp that hook down. And the easiest way to get that tight is if I go around it and I just do these kind of small little zigzag crimps. Okay, I'm gonna come to this side, make sure it's even, up and down. See that, how I'm just doing a, almost like a little zigzag S form. I'm gonna go around the post and do that. And the more I do that around that post, the tighter that wire gets. And you can just keep doing that and that will get tighter and tighter. You can keep crimping and crimping and, and all that force is being anchored on on that hook. So that's the best way to tie wire around something. See, that's not gonna move now. That's nice and tight. Okay, next step, I'm gonna go ahead and anchor that point to that center point of the chin. Again, I want a good inch or so excess so I can do a good loop around, good U, okay? Wrap that around. Make sure that I want that chin to be a good distance from the post, a good distance from that post right there. Okay. Nice tight U. Push that chin back, make sure I'm centered as much as possible. Anchor down. Anchor down nicely. All right, and there you go. You can see how that has created a good solid support bar so my face now does not move up and down. Now, what I'm showing you here is really just a, you know one design on how you would do a wire skull or just any shape. Um, if you come up with a better simplification, by all means, go ahead. All I'm showing you is just a, uh, the minimal way that you want to uh, work with wire to create a linear armature. I wanna do just a quick pause here, just to take a, a look at it. And it's always good to do that when you're sculpting, is to just stop and maybe uh, you know grab a cup of coffee and just look at your progress because that's where some of uh, the best decisions come from is those moments when you're sculpting while you're in the process that you pause and contemplate how's it going and whether or not things are working out. So far, so good. You can see I have a good structure for the face. I'm, I'm bending, I'm working, I'm uh, continuously shaping and uh, we will continue on with the top of the head and the back of the head to complete the form. Moving on to line six, we are going to now do the back of the cranium and get that completed. So we are going to spin the skull around here and we're gonna connect that side point there to that central point to that back side point pretty much follow along that crease there. So let me spin this around and then pretty simply, just like so, remember to use your symmetrical process, measure those two points, and then continue on with adding just like so.
Got a little zoom in there so you can get a better look. Again, make sure things are even. Trim off the excess. Tighten if needed. And there you go. So that's a pretty simple step there. And you can see how now we are starting to get a back of that head proper. Again, make sure we are going a slightly smaller than the actual skull. Next is line seven, which would be the top of the head here so we can get a proper slope. I know that we do have a crown here, but uh, that's not gonna be high enough. So we're gonna go ahead and simply go from the center point of the forehead here all the way to that back point. A pretty simple shape. Uh, what we have to pay attention to though is the forehead that, um, that, that you make sure that you do have that flat ness of a forehead of somewhat everybody does everybody has a somewhat of a um a vertical rise to that forehead and then it arches back into that slope do a little bit of shaping in the back here and that's going to be okay that should work again i'm connecting this back of that wire here to that top i'm going to have to do a little bit of um making it a little bit smaller again but I got the initial shape already. Okay, I'm gonna need some slack here for my crimping. Okay, good. I'm gonna mark that right there with my thumb. Attach that right to the center of that forehead line. Make sure you grab a hold of those two so you prevent those from crisscrossing. And then you go ahead and do your crimp. I'm going to grab my calipers and let that hang a little bit. I'm going to grab my calipers and make sure I do a measurement from that, from those two points, forehead to the back of the head. Okay. Again, not too bad. I got some... Uh, I got about a good half inch or a three quarter of an inch smaller, so that works perfectly for me. I want to make sure I get the height as well. So I'm going to go ahead and anchor that. I'm going to call that good right there. Good tight U there, and then make sure that it's centered. And I can always reshape it as I go. I'm going to go ahead and live with that, anchor that down. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of some of that excess wire. And then now I can do a little bit of shaping. Again, more paying attention to that vertical rise of that forehead and then that nice slope back. So I'm gonna to try to mimic that vertical rise and then that slope back. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and do some tightening and then call that line seven done. I'm 
Okay. Just do a little spin here. Do a little bit of adjustment as I go, but you can see. Now, from your perspective, this skull does look larger than that skull, but there is a distance here that you probably can't see that perspective um, from the skull. There is a distance. So uh, with the calipers, you can definitely see from that point and how that point is a little bit bigger. Okay. Line 8 is going to be the bottom of the back of the head. So we're going to go from that side point down to this bottom point here, there, basically, basically a U here. Um, now, what I want you to consider here or to observe is you see how the back of the head is lifted. There's a good amount of space, uh, vertical space here, lifting from the back of the head. So uh, pretty much the cheekbone line, if you just have a horizontal line, it meets the back of the head. So always remember to have some elevation to the back of the head in comparison to your jawline so the back of the head looks lifted and that's where uh, the beauty of the neck comes in when that is being modeled or sculpted in at some point. So back of the head, again, pretty simple shape. I'm gonna go ahead and get my wire and Make sure I hit those points. Again, I'm going to move my wire skull to the side so I can make sure that I have the point where my cheekbone is. Again, making sure I have enough elevation or lift to the back of that head. I know it's kind of hard to see because it's very abstracted because it's just a set of lines. Um, hard to see that depth, but uh, I'll do my best to give you a good angle at some point. Okay, so I'm going to probably, you see how much slack I have just because I have to shorten that shape because we make everything a little smaller. Make my marker here. See how small that shape turned into after I had to shrink that down. Okay. You can see how I have the bottom of that shape here, I'm trying to mimic the bottom of that cranium. Do a crimp there, bring that in, anchor that down, I'll shape that in a bit. Crimp that in, make sure I'm observing that I have the same amount of space for my crown to my segment. Crown to segment looks pretty good. Here I am right there, we go, that's a better angle. Okay. Trim the excess off. And I have the bottom of my cranium. See how small it is and that's fine. Remember, we're gonna be covering this with a lot of material at some point. Going to do some tightening. Always do that as you go along. Give every segment a, a tighten. Again, with your diagonal wire cutter. And there you go. You can see how I have the back of my head. And that should give me enough support for when I have some material.
and that should give me enough support at the bottom. And again, be sure to have that bottom elevated in comparison to the cheekbone and the jawline. Line 9 is going to be from the two forehead points here to here. So we can go ahead and get some volume here in the forehead area. Pretty easy shape. Gonna bend that. Okay. Pretty good to me. I'd have to shrink that down a bit, but I'm going to go ahead and crimp one side. Yeah, I'll shrink that down. Much better. little tightening with the diagonal pliers. And go ahead and trim off the excess. Now you see how I've lined it up here with the jawline going down. That works out pretty well. We'll move on to the next line. So line 10, which is going to be our final line, will be connecting this side point here to this side point here. So we'll be having a curved form, basically line up with this bottom curve right here and that'll complete our wire skull for this step of the process. Okay, so not a hard shape. Right there to those two points. And then mark that with my finger, that should do it. Bring that second form over here. Good. Shape that in a bit. Go ahead and anchor one side down first so I can get that side somewhat stable. And then bring this wire over here. Might have to go a little shorter here on this side, so I'm going to do that. There we go, much better. Okay. And see how that basically makes a oval form in the back there, which works out perfectly. 
Now let's go ahead and do some tightening and then we'll nip the excess off and then we'll be done. little shaping and like I stated before it's always good to go back to every segment and tighten them down just to make sure things are solid okay there we go and what's very interesting about doing armatures like this because there are certainly um, all types of ways, different types of ways. An artist always develop their own technique um, at some point, you know, because we have specific things that we want to do pertaining to our aesthetic. Um, but if you are new to sculpture, doing an ex exercise like this, again, really makes you understand how complex the shapes are of something like the skull or whatever you're doing. It's almost like a um, gesture it's a uh, rough draft of analyzing the form and it forces you to analyze the form um, a little more closely rather than just going into uh, assuming that you are uh, understanding the shape. This allows you to investigate it and also more practically, according to the process, allows you to have a super strong armature that can withstand the processes and the weight. Uh, of the materials that we're going to be adding, including the modeling and the mold making and probably the casting. So here is the finished armature. And I do hope that you enjoyed working with wire. I do hope you enjoyed um, trying to simplify something as complex as a skull uh, into a wire linear three-dimensional volumetric sculpture. Again, this is the way or one way to make an armature, which is a skeletal structure that will then allow you to apply plaster and fabric to reinforce the structure and to then proceed on to a clay modeling process, whether that process would be with ceramic clay or oil-based plasticine clay. Um, but in itself, it's a sculpture that's interesting and a technique that's interesting to uh, do and to use by itself. Um, again, you can create life-size sculptures or of any shape of any form with this process and these types of materials uh, again the 22 gauge wire and the larger 6 gauge copper wire and those two metals those two types of um, wires those two types of uh, ways that the metal has been manufactured uh, allow you to do so many things Again, it's really about just a construction. You're dealing with really high quality materials in the steel and the, met and, and the copper. So with a proper construction, a design, um, you can create anything. And then you can add anything onto this too. So we have three properties here. We have the plaster there, which allows us to have compression strength. And you combine that with the tensile strengths of the metals where you have the um, foundation of um, most of our civilization, um, especially when you add concrete in the mix. But for this step, we've created a armature skeletal structure that is ready now for the next step, which would, would be to allow uh, us to add plaster and fabric in what's called a widow's web that then allows more compression strength with that plaster for us to then begin adding clay to begin modeling. Again, remember, we need these armatures to be really strong. And that's why we're using high quality materials 
And that's why we are designing the sculpture from the very foundational form of what that sculpture would be, such as the skeleton. I hope everybody had a good time. I hope you are at peace with making art and making sculpture. Please like and subscribe. And I much appreciate you and the time that you've spent with me. Thank you.